TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel is undeterred and will relentlessly work to ensure that the international community understands the threat which emanates from the Islamic Republic of Iran. A senior Israeli intelligence official tells TV7 that in contrast to assumptions, Israel could strike Iran without American consent. Iraq's new nationalist victors demand of Iran-backed militias to disarm and fall in line. Israel is undeterred and will relentlessly work to ensure that the international community understands the threat which emanates from the Islamic Republic of Iran. Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid concluded a three-day trip to both the United Kingdom and France aimed at conveying Jerusalem's unrelenting resolve at a time when the P5 plus 1, including the United States, France, Britain, Russia, China plus Germany, are holding talks with a delegation of the Ayatollah regime in Vienna. I'm going to finish now three days in London and Paris with the Prime Minister of Britain, Boris Johnson, with the Prime Minister, with the Prime Minister of France, with Emmanuel Macron, on the Iranian Iran, in addition to the Iranian Iran in Vienna. After many years, the opinion of Israel is heard and the opinion of Israel is heard. It is necessary to remove the sanctions from Iran. It is necessary to remove the sanctions. צריך לשים על איראן איום צבאי אמיתי, כי רק זה ימנע ממנה להמשיך במרוץ שלה לגרעין. המרוץ לא נעצר כאן, והמרוץ לא נעצר בשיחות בווינה, יחד עם ראש הממשלה בנט, יחד עם שר הביטחון גנץ, שנוסע לוושינגטון בשבוע הבא, אנחנו נמשיך לעבוד כדי שהעולם יבין את האיום האיראני במלואו. It is important to know that while Jerusalem's message was met by receptive ears in both London and Paris, only time will tell whether Israel's concerns will be taken into account if and when the so-called JCPOA, or Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, will be revived and under which constraining conditions. Nevertheless, at a time when the U.S. administration continues to vocally maintain that its focus continues to be mutual return to full compliance with the JCPOA, labeling the 2015 nuclear deal as the best available option, the Israeli defense establishment is preparing for a so-called Plan B. According to domestic reports which TV7 corroborated, despite the fact that Israel is formally opposed to a revived nuclear agreement, the Israeli security establishment hopes for an agreement to be signed which will limit Tehran's nuclear progress and therefore provide for more time to complete ongoing preparations for an attack on Iran. According to a senior Israeli intelligence official who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity, as opposed to general assumptions regarding Israel's reluctance to strike Iran without American consent, neither the first bombing nor the second were executed with their knowledge, in reference to the Israeli aerial strike on Iraq's nuclear installation in 1981 and the subsequent Israeli strike on Syria's nuclear installation in 2007, both of which were done without American knowledge. The official further stressed that while Iran never abandoned its activities to achieve nuclear capabilities, it has opted for a devious long-term strategy. Nevertheless, the official stressed, quote, Israel's red lines are known, and those willing to listen won't be surprised when the day of judgment arrives. Regrettably, not all relevant parties are willing to factor in regional concerns into account. Meanwhile, in Brussels, responding to a question whether the European Union High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell, was sticking to his mandated role as coordinator of the nuclear talks in Vienna, or has been working to advance his own opinions, spokesperson Nabila Masrali said the following. Uh, the full uh, GCPOA implementation is only uh, is the only way, at least that's our position, uh, for the international community to get the necessary assurances on Iran's nuclear program and for Iran to reap the full uh, benefits of the GCPOA. Of course, 
The position has not changed. The EU has is, uh, have always been backing these talks. The EU, uh, the High Representative, has a very clear mandate, and uh, we uh, again diplomacy is the according to the EU and to the to the mandate that the HRVP has. Diplomacy is the only way forward. Meanwhile, the United Nations headquarters in New York, where Russia's first deputy ambassador to the UN, Dmitry Polyansky echoed Moscow's position, which naturally lays full blame over Iran's nuclear progress on the United States. And while the International Atomic Energy Agency had acknowledged on a number of occasions that Tehran's accumulated nuclear-related know-how cannot be taken away, Moscow is seemingly under a different sense of impression. Uh, we are not very, very far from the restoration of the normal, normal functioning of the JCPOE. I would like to remind you in this context that the whole issue right now, it's, uh, it was triggered by the United States withdrawal by the previous administration uh, from JCPOA, and that's when the whole situation got uh, off hand. And what we are trying to do now uh, is uh, we are trying first and foremost, uh, foremost to, uh, to re-engage the United States uh, there. Of course, there are things that Iran has done, and uh, a lot of people criticize this country, saying that it has deviated from its commitments. But uh, none of the steps that uh, Iran has done uh, are, is irreversible. Turning to Iraq, where the country's electoral commission announced the final results from the general election, which took place on October 10th, confirming nationalist Shiite cleric Muqtada al-Sadil's movement's victory as the biggest bloc with 73 mandates in the fractious 329-seat parliament. Next was the Taqaddum party, which draws support from the country's Sunni Muslim minority with 37 seats. Former Prime Minister Nur al-Maliki's State of Law group won 33 mandates, and the Kurdistan Democratic Party managed to secure 31 seats. The results were broadly in line with preliminary figures released in the days after the October 10th election. It is important to highlight that while Muqtada al-Sadr is in no way regarded as a friend of the West, he is neither a friend of the Ayatollah regime in Tehran, which exerts its influence over Baghdad by means of numerous proxies, which operate under the umbrella alliance of the Popular Mobilization Forces. Hence, general public frustration with Iran's meddling in Iraqi affairs is seemingly translated into the worst performance Iran-backed factions managed to secure in years. And while refusing to accept defeat, Iraqi militias loyal to Iran have been granted an option to regain favor by the nationalist victors of the election, so long as they disarm themselves and remove any Iranian elements from their ranks. رسالتي إلى القوى السياسية التي تعتبر نفسها خاسرة في هذه الانتخابات أن تراجعوا أنفسكم لتعيدوا ثقة الشعب بكم مستقبلا وإنما تقومون به حاليا سيضيع تاريخكم ويزيد من نفور الشعب منكم ثالثا في حال أردتم الاشتراك بتشكيل الحكومة في حال أردتم الاشتراك بتشكيل الحكومة فعليكم بما يلي تصفية الحشد الشعبي المجاهد من العناصر الغير منضبطة وعدم زج اسمه وعنوانه في السياسة حل الفصائل المسلحة أجمع ودفعة واحدة وتسليم سلاحها كمرحلة أولى إلى الحشد الشعبي عن طريق قائد القوات المسلحة. Meanwhile, ordinary Iraqis have voiced hope that the Iranian proxy militias would fall in line for fear of what their refusal might mean for the country of Iraq. الفترة الإعلان كانت طويلة 
نعم هناك كانت اكو نتائج اوليه ولكن كثره الطعون اللي قدمت من قبل التحالفات والكتل السياسيه يعني هي بالاصح عقدت المشهد السياسي اولا وبالثاني وثانيا انه كان هنالك ترقب وحذر في الشارع من ردود الفعل والدليل على ذلك انه لا زالت الاعتصامات من قبل الكتل التي لم يحالفها الحظ في الحصول على مقاعد عديده موجودين امام بوابه المنطقه الخضراء رغم انه هنالك يعني تظاهره هي سلميه واعتصام سلمي لكنه لا نعلم في قادم الايام بعد اعلان نتائج واذا صادقت المحكمه الاتحاديه على هذا الانتاج ماذا ستكون ردود الفعل من قبل المعتصمين؟ على الكتل التي لم تفوز في الانتخابات عليها الرضوخ والقبول بقرار الجماهير لان هذا مو قرار مصطفى الكاظمي ولا قرار محمد الحلبوسي هذا قرار شعبي هاي انتخابات وانتم ردتوا الانتخابات انتم الكتل التي لم تفوزوا بالانتخابات هي اللي اللي صوتت الانتخابات وارادت الانتخابات وهيات نفسها للانتخابات ما في سوء انتهت انتهى الامر يعني ما مو 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 قوه هي مو قوه يعني لو العب لو خرب الملعب Thank you for watching us as part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative. I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Romanian prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tov Mevorach ve Chag Chanukah Sameach, and we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.